the Murray Gravel Triangle. We're in northeast Scotland and we're going to try to link together three long distance walking routes into one great bikepacking gravel route. It's a whole bunch of tours squished together. You can do the longer version over three or four days and enjoy a huge range of off-road riding, or you can concentrate on the central section, the triangle itself, and have a blast. If we're right, this should make a great introductory bikepacking trip. And we're starting in the foothills of the Cairngorm Mountains. To be exact, our ride begins at the excellent Badgoosh Outdoor Centre, just outside Aviemore. From here, the old logging way is an off-road route into the town. The Speyside Way has been extended and now starts in Newton Moor, but we feel this is a better place to begin our ride. Scotland has some fantastic wild bike-packing routes, like Antorus Moor or the Badger Divide. But not everybody is ready to take on such wild places. And they might, may not be suitable for certain times of the year and, and certain conditions. And that's where we think something like the Moray Gravel Triangle could be ideal. We think the Moray Gravel Triangle will make a great introductory bikepacking route for people who are new to it. And also for more experienced bikepackers, it's a great way to either start the season early or extend it to later in the year when some of the other routes may just not be suitable. So what is this triangle thing? In northeast Scotland, three long distance walking routes intersect and form a triangle shape. It is at the heart of our route and these three videos. It's about 100 miles long and the three corners are Granton, the obvious start, Spey Bay and the town of Forres. But we have time for a bigger ride and an excellent off-road tour. The east side of the triangle is the Speyside Way and there's fabulous riding to Granton which we can't miss. And the Speyside Way continues to Bucky, so in this video we're doing that to finish what we started. The next two videos will also tackle separate walkers routes, the Murray Coastal Trail and the Dava Way. At the start of the Speyside Way, you're never far from a small town, often associated with ferries across the Spey, like Boat of Garten. Then you're quickly off-road again. Just outside of Boat of Garten, there's a lovely section that's off-road. And a month or so earlier, we'd have been turning right up here and heading down to this. This is the Osprey Center. The reserve is run by the RSPB. And in the building, they have CCTV cameras, non-invasive ones, where you can watch the ospreys on their nest. However, by this time of the year, the birds are probably gone, and so the centre is shut. I am very pleasantly surprised. Part of me was dreading this, thinking we'd be riding on one long old railway line. But we are most certainly not. Look at this! This is Nethy Bridge, and this is the bridge at Nethy Bridge. And according to my guidebook, there's been a river crossing here since Pictish times. Probably not the same one, because that one was built by Thomas Telford. The cafe's closed, so we press on. Right, Granton it is. Yeah. An old station platform shows we're now on the old railway line we'd heard so much about. I'm always very impressed when I come to Speyside how well kept the land is. It's certainly not true of other parts of Scotland and the UK, but here there's no overgrown bits, there's no trees down. It always rather lovely. Fortunately, there aren't too many of these. These are like walkers' gates, aren't they? They would be dreadful with panniers. Woo! 
Grand Town is the first large town after Aviemore, and if you're just doing the Murray Gravel Triangle, this is the best place to start and finish. What follows might be different if you ride this, because after a couple of miles, we have to divert onto a back road. There's a section of the Walker's Space Side Way, which we as cyclists are asked not to ride. They're going to upgrade it in a few years' time. It's probably when they get the money. Uh, but in the meantime, it just gets torn up far too much, and there are also loads of those awkward gates. So we're diverting briefly onto a little B road for a quiet ride. Try not to get onto the A95 by mistake, because that road is just one you don't really want to be on on a bike. I might have spoken too soon about the upgrade coming in a few years. Looks like those improvements I mentioned have already started. Must have found some money. Work seems to be progressing quickly, and the new section should be open by spring 2022. That could change the emphasis of this whole trail. I've been along this section before when I was filming the Speyside Marathon. And as far as the cyclist is concerned, this surface is a huge improvement. I'm not sure it's great for a walker, though. And you kind of wonder if they're deliberately trying to turn the Speyside way into more of a cycling route than a walking one. And take a look at this, one of a number of bike stations that have been installed. Yeah, tire lever, Allen keys, Phillips screwdriver, flat screwdriver. Pedal spanner, more Allen pedal keys. Pedal spanner keys, and for your... For your oh, system. hey, and round here, round here we have a track pump. Oh, that's a good idea. Shoot. Wow, that is brilliant. Bayside is whiskey country, with more than 50 distilleries. Speyside Way walkers have been known to sample several drams along the way, and many hotels like the Highlander Inn at Craigellachie have a vast variety to try. I found this lot overwhelming. Much of the flavour comes from the barrel in which the whisky is aged. Because distillery tours can take a while, we joined a quick visit to the Cooperage just outside of Craig Elachy. Morning, gentlemen. Hello. I've done some long distance walking, and I think the rest of the Speyside Way is definitely better on a bike. There are two substantial climbs on a minor road and a forest road. See that? See what's happening here? The wind is starting to get up. It's going to be behind us later today, but tomorrow we'll have a headwind. Well, at this precise moment, I don't really know where Sean is. Uh, after that last shot of him going past, I think he might have shot off down the forest track. So I don't know whether he's along that road at the top or he's further down this one. So hopefully, hopefully we'll meet up somewhere today. Yeah, you went the wrong way, you need to retrace your steps. Okay. Amazing how wrong you can go on a Waymark trail. I did exactly the same thing. <laughs> I was way up the top. That's all right. <laughs> Wasn't me getting lost this time. As we approach the coast, the spay becomes wider, the tang of salt is in the air, and we reach a crucial crossroads. So if all you're interested in doing is the Murray Gravel Triangle, then you could start in Granton, uh, head up to this point, go west on the Murray Coastal Trail, and then south from Forez, back to Granton, down the Dava Way. We're pressing on to reach the point where the river meets the sea, Spey Bay. Almost all the spay salmon come through that gap in the sea there. It's amazing. Look at the amount of fish each year that come through that gap, that very small gap. This feels like the end of the Speyside Way, but it's not. 
Our route continues along some great coastal paths to the fishing town of Bucky. In our next video, we'll tackle the top of the Murray Gravel Triangle. With the help of local riders, we'll pick the most rideable sections of the Murray Coastal Trail. We have GPS routes and information sheets to download from the video description and from the resources page at alwaysanotheradventure.com. Our huge thanks to Visit Murray and Speyside for providing our hotels and food. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next section. Give us a thumbs up and we'll see you again next time.